your busy schedule and your busy day, you have tuned in to this program for some reason or other you think, just to spend some time. But I believe you have a divine appointment. All through the Word of God, we read of divine appointments people had with God <clears throat> and had with Jesus. And we're having divine appointments today. Sometimes we don't realize it, but we come away refreshed. We come away filled with hope and, and our dreams are restored because of a divine appointment. I was thinking of the woman in Luke 13. She'd been over with a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. And Jesus was preaching in the synagogue that day and he happened to see her. She was unable in any way to raise herself up. She went through life looking at the ground, looking at the people's feet or sandals, and she was never able to look eye to eye into people's eyes. And little did she know that morning as she went to the synagogue that today was her day of deliverance. When Jesus saw her, he said seven words and immediately she was released from the spirit of infirmity. Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. He could have said man. He could have said child, girl, or boy. You are loosed from your infirmity today. Many times people are going around bent over, maybe not physically, but in their spirit and in their emotions because of things that have happened. Death comes in all kinds of ways. Finances fail in all kinds of ways. And circumstances causes even relationships to fail. But I want you to know today, man, woman, boy, and girl, you are loosed from your infirmity today. It doesn't get any better than that. Jesus laid his hands on her, and immediately she glorified God. Some of you today have had so many things that have weighed you down, but I do know the Spirit of the Lord desires to remove every weight, and he would say again, today you are loosed from your infirmity. Romans 10, 9 tells us faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. As we continue to hear and to hear and to hear, our faith continues to grow in God and in his word. Thank God for his word. I believe for you today that this is a divine appointment. May I also tell you that today you are more than a conqueror. This is what more than a conqueror means. Imagine a champion who goes into the ring. He's the world champion. He wins every fight, but he goes into that ring and he taunts his oppressor. They go to fighting like crazy. He is bruised, he is battered, he is bloodied, and he gets out of there as a winner. He comes out even in the midst of all that torment, the winner. He then takes his shower, he dresses, and he goes home to his wife where he hands her the check. She is more than a conqueror. She didn't have to get into that ring. She didn't have an oppressor. She didn't have to fight. She didn't get butt bloodied and bruised. She didn't have to do anything, but she got the reward. That's a very crude illustration, but if you don't get anything else out of what I say today, I want you to know that Jesus is the one who took that beating for you and for me. Jesus is the one upon whom all the sins of the world were laid, past, present, and future. Jesus is the one who took into his own body all your diseases, all your broken hearts, your broken spirits, all of that was laid on Jesus that day at Golgotha. 
And Galatians 13, 3 even tells us that Jesus took all the curses upon his body that day because cursed is everyone or anyone who hangs on a tree. Jesus was totally defenseless that day as his hands were outstretched. He could not in any way defend himself from the blows that were coming. And he willingly did all of that for you and for me. Jesus then spoke from that cross, it is finished. And he went to that grave. He took the keys of hell, death and from Satan and he rose again and he's now seated at the right hand of God our Father. Can you see yourself there? Ephesians tells us that we are seated with him in heavenly places today. We are now the recipients of anything and everything that Jesus suffered and paid for on that cross that day. He paid it all. Therefore, if we know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we are more than a conqueror. We have all the rewards that he paid for that day. Nothing is impossible for any man, woman, boy, or girl in God. Let me share with you about another woman who probably thought she could do no thing. This unnamed woman had lived such a life that she would go to the well to get water in the middle of the day so she wouldn't run into anyone else. Others came in the morning or in the evening. And one day this unnamed Samaritan woman arrived at the well and there sat a Jewish man and he asked of her something to drink of all things. Back in those days, the Jews hated the Samaritans but then we in modern America wouldn't understand anything about prejudice, would we? The Jews would even walk on the other side of the street, even if a Samaritan was in distress, rather than going and helping him and taking care of him or her. What this unnamed woman did not know, she had a divine appointment with that Jew that day. In fact, that Jew was on his way to Galilee, and he told the men that were traveling with him, look, I've got an appointment at noon, and I must go out of my way. I must go by Samaria. Jesus knew he had a noon appointment to meet an unnamed Samaritan woman, and he was willing to go out of his way to make that appointment. You see, Jesus loves you and me so much that he will go out of his way to turn things right side up, if need be, to have an appointment with us. He did that for us already at Calvary. He went out of his way for us. Perhaps with some haughtiness in her voice, this unnamed woman said to Jesus, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? And with tenderness, Jesus replied, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. This piqued her interest, and she, required, she inquired, perhaps again with a little haughtiness, But how would you draw any water from this well? You don't have any utensils with you to which to draw water, and that well is very deep. Where would I get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who dug this well, and he drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? And Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water from this well will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor have to come here every day to draw water. This, water, this woman had become totally engrossed in what Jesus was saying and with this conversation. 
if this Jew had that kind of living water that she would never thirst again and she wouldn't have to come here any longer to draw the stares of the people around her and the gossip that they were given and repeating about her. She wanted everything that this Jew had to give. Then Jesus drops the bomb. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. He didn't say that to hurt her. He didn't say that to embarrass her. Jesus said that to totally release her from any sin and any bondage in her life. He asked her that because until we face the facts of who we are and where we stand, we cannot be set free. Jesus knows all about us anyway, so there's no need to put on an act and pretend we are something that we are not. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. I'm sure by this time she's got her head down and she's probably got some remorse as she told Jesus that. And Jesus said to her, you've well said, you have no husband, for you've had five husbands, and the man you're living with now is not your husband. In this you have truly spoken. Imagine the very thing that has haunted her and set her also apart has now been told to her by a Jew, a strange Jew, sitting at the well just asking for a drink of water. Amazing. Jesus was the seventh man in her life, and he brought her living water, and he turned her life around. Seven means completion or rest. With this revelation from Jesus, it immediately turned this unnamed woman's thoughts to worship. Isn't that interesting? She felt no condemnation. She had felt love and acceptance. Not love as the world gives, but the God kind of love that comes with purpose to change the situation, not just bandage it up. We humans get caught up on our own type of love, and many times we get in God's way trying to show the world our love. She told Jesus, our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews say that if we have any worship, we have to go to Jerusalem because that's the only place to worship. And Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the time is coming, the hour is coming when you will neither worship on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship because salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. You and I are living in that day. We don't go to a mountain to worship. We don't go to Jerusalem to worship. We worship Jesus in spirit and in truth. Jesus was sharing with this unnamed woman about you and me. Isn't that awesome? The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And for the very first time recorded in scripture, Jesus told someone he was the Messiah. He hadn't even told his disciples that. And this was a woman and not just a woman, a Samaritan woman. Oh, the goodness and the grace of the Lord Jesus, a woman who had come with head bowed down, now has received the word of God, and she is the first one to know he is the Messiah, the Christ for whom they have all waited. Regardless of who this woman was, regardless of her past, and regardless of her present, 
Jesus revealed himself to her as Messiah and her future was going to be changed forever and forever. At that very moment, his disciples came back because they'd been in the city trying to get some food and they see him sitting there talking with a woman and a Samaritan woman at that. And although none of them dared say anything to Jesus about it, they all had questions. What is going on here? This unnamed Samaritan woman took this opportunity and she left her water pot and she ran into the city to tell the man of that city, come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Some of those Samaritan man, men might have said, what, another man? But there was something different about her this time. She spoke with such deep conviction and change that those men went out of the city themselves and they came to Jesus. Many of the Samaritans that day believed on him because of that unnamed Samaritan woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. But when they heard Jesus speak, they urged him to stay with them and he stayed with them for two more days. And many more believed because of hearing them him themselves. Then they said to the woman, now we believe not because of what you have said, but we have heard him ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. This little unnamed Samaritan woman who slinked her way to the well that day had the greatest appointment of her life, and she became the very first woman evangelist. Think of that and brought a whole city to Jesus Christ. Why have I emphasized her being the unnamed Samaritan woman at the well? Even though we will never know her name until we get to heaven, here we are 2,000 years later still talking about her. I believe when she ran into the city that day to tell the men about Jesus, she had absolutely no idea, nor did she have an agenda. She had no idea that we would still be talking about her 2,000 years later. Ladies and gentlemen, if today in your heart you were saying, if they only knew about me, and you can fill in the blank. The good news is that if you have received Jesus Christ to be the Messiah, you have confessed the Lord Jesus with your mouth, not your sins. You've confessed the Lord Jesus with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God the Father has raised him from the dead. It is time for you to take one last glimpse at your past and tell your past goodbye. Now turn your face to the future with the Lord, forgetting those things which are behind and straining towards that which is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I, God, will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Selah. Isaiah 53, 18 and 19. No one may ever know your name. And it's okay. Your name really isn't important except to be called for dinner. The important name is Jesus. If you can speak to anyone and they see and they hear Jesus, Messiah, even as that whole town did, that is the greatest accomplishment you can ever have. You see, it's not in numbers. Jesus only had 12 close disciples, and one of them was a traitor. 
The conversation Jesus had with that unnamed woman was an extremely short conversation, according to this writing in John 4. But it was very powerful, and it went straight to the heart of the matter. God is doing a new thing. My life has totally changed in 2017. I've already done things this year I have not done for many years in ministry. You're not too old, nor are you too young. I am 82, and God has given me the delightful and awesome privilege of sharing Jesus. Keep your heart tuned and turned to Jesus. He will speak things and lead you and direct you. You don't have to go chasing after things to do and think being busy means being spiritual. My husband had a plaque in his office that said, beware of the barrenness of the busy life. Please hear me. You are a supernatural being having a human experience. Most of us live like a human who has a supernatural experience when we kneel down to pray or we read our Bible or we go to church on Sunday, Easter, or Christmas. But if you already have Jesus Christ in your life, you are already into eternal life and you are a supernatural being. This is why I say to you today, you can do all things with Jesus Christ in your life. You can't get more of Jesus. If he's in your heart and the Holy Spirit abides within you, he comes in his fullness. You are the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Now let God arise and let his enemies be scattered in your life today. My question today to you is, where are you today? Are you still the person who is bent over and bowed down? Or are you the person who is ready to run through a troop and leap over a wall? In the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, be healed and be whole this day. Maybe no one but Jesus will see or know what you are doing in the kingdom, but he is all who matters. God bless you. Go with God today. Be strengthened, be whole, be loosed from every spirit of infirmity in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm in Christ and he sees Christ when he's looking at me, then he's pleased. We see the culture of the kingdom is actually actually the fruit of the Spirit. It is nothing that I have done, but God has done it all. So receive good news today. It is only from the Word of God that faith comes. And I keep hearing his voice saying, Jan, I got this. So I'm here to tell you he's got it. This is where a different kind of grace enters in. It's the grace that says, I know you are and I'm going to bless you anyway. From all of us at Sea Life Ministries, Happy 